sound speeds and welcome to another reaction video now this video was submitted to me from a viewer like you not in the pbs sense but in the sense that it was a viewer that sent me the video and if there's a video you would like me to react to send it to me in an email at alan at soundspeeds.us and that is a .us email address and it will be down below in this video so you can see it down there but hey let's go ahead waste no time and jump right into our video this video is called $100,000 Pro Audio Kit versus $1,000 Beginner Audio Kit. And as of the time of this video, it has 44,080 views on a channel with 1.93 million subscribers. It was released on February 7, 2022, and as of the time of this video, has 1.6K upvotes. And uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. Hitting play. Let's see what happens here. All right. He's got a lot of microphones, tapes, uh, audio root. Those are really good. Mix pre. I guess this is showing the $100,000 and the $1,000 audio Hello, kit full-time film. Welcome to this video where we're talking about what's in a $100,000 audio kit okay. versus a beginner. Okay, I mean, they're they're using, okay, <laughs> there's a premium kit there, and then there's uh, and, uh, the discount it. stuff also. It's it's true. My curiosity, Brendan, that I want to talk about today is why you need this stuff, why yeah. you have this stuff. How All right, let me, let me stop you right there. The reason why you need it is because you have to be prepared for every possible scenario. Why do you need to have 30? cameras there filmmaker dude well it's because you kind of want them and because each one of them might be better for a certain thing if you want high speed you might gravitate towards one if you want to uh have like something with a very very high frame rate you might want to go for another one you also need to have a selective amount of gopros perhaps in case you do any action type stuff maybe an instant 360 and of course if you really want something to be out of focus you got to have your panasonic cameras how long is it taking you to get this stuff? What if I can't afford $100,000 of audio gear? First of all, do I it's kind of, first of all, weird to me that they're going for $100,000 and $1,000. Why not a middle ground, not a $10,000 also? That way you can see like the 1% budget, the 10% budget, and then the 100% budget. I mean, here's the thing. Sound is one of those things, just like everything else out there, that the law of diminishing returns does apply to. You could spend $200 and get something pretty decent. You could spend $400 and get something a little better. Or you could spend $2,000 and get something that's even tinier, a little bit better. So just a little bit more than that. But, you know, hey, let's see what he has to say. I need $100,000 of audio Do you gear. Need it? And what's the better uh, beginner option until I can get to such a setup as... So a lot of redundancy here. He's got like a nano shield here. He's got a cyclone. He's got some Rycote. This looks like the road wind jammer. He's, first of all, you don't need to have, if you're just a, a regular dude. I mean, I, I won't, I won't speculate. Okay. I'm not going to speculate at all. Let's just watch. Before we dive in, this video is blah, 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 blah. Well, I think the biggest thing to look at is what your needs are. That oh, yes. That's a great way to look at it. Because here's the thing. If you're starting out and you're just doing ENG type stuff, you are doing corporate events, you're never more than about 10, 15 feet away from someone, or at least you can hardwire things. You can put a lavalier microphone on someone and it can be visible. If you're doing film, you might need to have yourself upwards of maybe 16 channels, 16, uh, you know, wireless microphones out with redundancy on your microphone. So that really does matter right out of the gate. He's exactly right on that. Me to this smaller kit. Let's first talk about. OK, that's a this is bare bones and basic. You don't have any you don't have a um, I see the boom pole, which is the the one that they replaced the newer boom pole that I reviewed, which was a hunk of garbage. They discontinued like a week later. And this pole was the one that replaced it. I have not reviewed this one. And I wonder if, if, if the bad pole, we need to review it. That way newer will replace it with something else. But there is what's missing is a shock mount and wind protection. That is a is that an NTG four? No, I mean a three. That's a that's an eight hundred dollar microphone, and so and there's no shock mount. I, I'm missing a shock mount there. So obviously we're just going for the recorder, which is a Zoom Handy H uh, series. What is that? A five or six? I always confuse the confuse the two of them. So going out of that straight to a boom pole, no shock mount, bare bones and basic, no wind protection. Also, so I mean that's pushing your budget. I don't know how much the uh, the recorder is. I would think it'd be more two hundred dollars, and with that, with the eight hundred dollar microphone. You've already exceeded your budget by the time you add the cable and the boom pole to it. So let's see what kind of dealies he's getting. Maybe he's buying them used or something. About the sure. lower end kit, what I recommend everybody having. And that is a microphone, a mm -hmm. boom mic. For me, it's the not an NTG1. Rode NTG3. You okay. The NT see, oh, all right, you, so you got a discount on it. It was three, it was uh, $100 less than it is as of right now. I've known this microphone to be $800. 
Maybe I need to go back and reprice it. The price may have dropped, but when I was looking at it, whenever I've included it in videos in the past, it's been $800, not $700. So it may have been on a discount then. So we'll see. I mean, it's right now also he's showing the satin nickel version of it. You would probably want to get yourself a black one, especially if there's no windscreen. TG5 or the four, you would need a boom pole. Cause okay, he shows a KTEC boom and then he, he puts a little pop up there of a newer boom pole. And that's the one that they replaced, uh, the, the junk one that I, that I reviewed, the NW7000 boom pole. NW7000, isn't, isn't that also a uh, microphone, the NW7000? Might not be remembering. I don't do the discount stuff, so I don't know. But okay, so there's no shock mount. He has a microphone and he has a boom pole. Right now he is sitting at, we'll call it by your point, uh, seven hundred and sixty-eight dollars, seven hundred and seventy dollars. Let's say because you know you want to make sure that you can get the mic in the right position. As far as lav mics go, now there's two different ways to take this. Okay, lav mics. He hasn't even gotten himself a recorder yet, so. He also doesn't have headphones. I mean, there's, there's a few different things here that he's missing and he's going straight for a lav mic. You don't have the budget for that, dude. I, I, um, let's see what he says. To keep this under $1,000 or around $1,000, the tap. There you go. There is the thing right there. Around $1,000. Okay. Tascam DR10L. Love this thing. Is a great option. What's the big. Okay. So right now we only have about $30 left and this is what we are going to be using as our recorder. This does not supply phantom power, so you cannot power your microphone. So without exceeding your $1,000 budget, you can't actually record the microphone that you have, nor is it going to be in a shock mount, nor can you get a cable that goes out of, uh, out of the microphone to your recorder. So there's a whole bunch of problems here, plus you don't have headphones. Let's see what he says. Biggest problem with the Tascam. You can't monitor the Tascam. You put well, it, it on. Has, it has auto. Yeah, voice. basically because it's 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 basically a device that you put on somebody and it's a pocket recorder. It's not a transmitter. So it's going to record on someone. So once you monitor it, you, you listen to it. Once you verify it sounds as good as it possibly can, you just let them roam. So that's actually the way I record a lot of things for myself. Once I place a lavalier microphone, I know it's going to sound good. So I might as well just... Let it go and pick it up in post. Auto levels. Auto's good. You can set your auto limiters. Auto white balance, auto ISO. Yeah, it's all the same thing. You're right, I'm sorry. So unlike with the Sennheiser where you need a transmitter and a receiver, these have to communicate over UHF frequencies. So what mm. happens is, is if yep. interruption happens- He's right on that. Then you'll- I mean- or it just completely cuts out. The advantage is, is this records to itself, so yep. you never have to have a transmitter and a receiver. The disadvantage yep. to that, though, of course, is you can't monitor the audio, so you because go Because this off is on your subject. Yeah, it goes on your subject, and it's like, well, I hope it sounds good. So say we were doing an interview and we only had one boom. So if we're side by side, and it's a locked off interview. Again, no one cable. Man, one man show, one person crew, you could say. This isn't ideal, it's not perfectly at my mouth, it's not perfectly at his mouth, but it's getting the general idea if we're shoulder to shoulder. If you have someone that can actively boom, then they can change between as we- But of course he has nothing to this. listen to, and so- I've seen people do this. I know it sounds crazy. They mic someone up and they're like, yeah, it just doesn't sound good on the other person. It's like, right. There was no microphone on the other person. Imagine if you're shooting a subject and- Why is he, I, frame, all right, and they, they clearly have this camera in auto focus mode. It keeps focusing on the background and it's driving me crazy here because it's not focused on the actual people in front of the camera this is a channel with almost two million subscribers and he can't focus on the people it's like on left in auto person. or something Imagine it's driving me crazy he's at look at this it's focused on the instruments in the back of the people out of focus you're driving me crazy here camera people and i'm not in frame and then you're disappointed that i don't look good in the frame you were just shooting you're out of focus person. it's it's a weird concept if you want to hear someone you put a mic on someone to sum it up if you do a lot of weddings the Tascam is gonna be a great option. Right. If you do a lot of corporate interview type stuff, get something with a boom. And of course, if you get a boom, you will- He's got that one connected up, recommend which is H6 good. Six or the H4N Pro for your lower end because they have the XLR ins. I did commercials for Virgin Mobile on an H6 and a Rode NTG3. That's it, no loves, no nothing. All right, okay. so Brendan. Yes. Beginner Yay. that we're comparing to a $100,000 professional- Focus NTG3. on the people. NTG3, yeah. Newer. It's like he's got a Panasonic camera and it keeps rack going out of focus. What is focused on this shot? It's the edge of the slate here. <sighs> okay. Boom pole from Amazon. It's around 60 bucks. Mogami XLR cable. 
<laughs> so you're using a cable that's worth more than the actual boom pole itself. Okay, let's just make this discount package. What's what's a budget? Let's just just completely go over it. That's fine. Whatever. Eighty bucks plus the recorder. Zoom H six. <laughs> Okay, so it was the H6, 350 bucks. So between his microphone, which is $700 by his count, and $350 for the recorder, he's already $50 over the budget. If you're going to do these kinds of videos, at least stick to your own, you know, thing here. Uh, if you set the rules, you got to stick to them. Right now with the, the microphone, you don't have a shock mount yet. You bought yourself a Mogami Gold cable. Let's let's see what else you have. You're missing at this point a shot mount and headphones from my account and cables if you need them to go from your. Uh, no, you don't because you're recording the live separately. Okay, whatever. Three hundred bucks. Your personal recommendation for the best bang for buck recorder. There are cheaper options. There are more expensive yeah. options, but you put your name behind this one. Yeah. And then just to have, good to have. He puts his name behind it. Love Mike. Hundred bucks. Our total is. <laughs> it's not quite a thousand, but if you can get this used, you'll definitely get it under a thousand. I okay. All right. All right. Most things like the microphone, the biggest, you know, you know, uh, thing in this entire package that costs money, you're not going to be able to find it for like 500 bucks. Not very easily, at least. Maybe at an estate sale if someone doesn't know what they have. If someone buys something and um, has no idea what it resells for because they didn't buy it, someone else bought it. Maybe then, but the recorder, the all this kind of stuff. All right, first of all, if you give yourself a thousand dollar budget, you got to stick within your budget. I, I'm a, I'm a pretty big stickler about that. So they broke their own rules here, and that's one of those things that's irritating to me. I got this mic actually for three hundred bucks with this blimp, which is crazy. How in the world did he get that deal? I have no idea how he got that deal. Must have been one of those things where it was just like he happened to be at the right place in the right time, and someone didn't know what they they had, or they thought it was the wrong microphone or something. They're like, oh yeah, it's an NT1. Put that in the blimp and sell it for 300 bucks. And it wasn't the NT1, it was the NTG. Four, five, three, whatever the thing is, whatever. So let's move on to this kit. What do you need? What do you not need? Why does it exist? With photo vibrance, you can transform. So let's move on to this kit. What do you need? What do you not need? Why does it exist? This is what you bring to your shoots. To every shoot I go to, this is what I show. How do you carry it all around? Well, Nate Taylor. Hello there. So this is my mini cart. It's a custom cart. I got this from Home Depot, and then I got these drawers. I, I must say, that's actually pretty cool. It's not functional at all as a cart. It's cool for storage. So if you were going on to like on a movie that was taking you internationally, that's a cool way to do it. Taking your entire kit in this and then rebuilding it when you get there, to me, it's kind of ridiculous. And and he also has a DPA 4099 right there. So that's obviously for recording uh, instruments. He's He's got a whole bunch of different things in here, I guess, for voice and instruments and whatever. Is there Tano's sustainer is the name. And then I just have everything inside There's here. no way this all fits on that. And it's 100, 000, six figures. Six figures. Prove it. So a lot of people, unfortunately, don't believe audio because the smaller the audio gear, usually the more expensive it is. Okay, here's the thing right now. It depends on what he has in this kit. You could very quickly and easily get yourself up to $100,000, especially if you build a redundancy to the system. That's the big thing right there. A lot of the times people are just like, is there really redundancy? Is there not? Why do you need to have six microphones that are the same thing? It depends on what your purposes are. And you may also say, why do you need to have like 16 channels of wireless? It's because you have a 16 channel recorder and you want to have every single, you want to have enough microphones for every single channel should you need it. You ever do something, you know, really big that requires, you know, a, a whole bunch of microphones out for a, a big ensemble cast, you need to have it. So I mean, it's not like camera where you can have everybody, all the actors in one frame and you're still on one camera. That's when you need to have multiple different passes and multiple different takes and multiple different setups in order to get everybody on camera. That's why you do it for a camera. In the world of sound, you got to put them all on a microphone. So let me walk you through it. We have a Zaxcom Nova. We have two MRX-414s inside of the Zaxcom Nova. Yeah, those are the receiver modules. Those things actually uh, have the ability to uh, take transmitters and, and go straight to this receiver. So it's actually a really, really cool design. I love the, the Nova, actually. I have so. my main kit and I have my backup kit in case this one goes down. In this main... 
Okay, so there's the redundancy we were talking about before. In sound, you have redundancy. So if one recorder goes bad, you do, you're you're not down very long. You just swap it out. So he says he has redundancy. Kit, we also have the audio root BDS. We have a Wi-Fi. Uh, That's good. We have two smart. Hold on a second. Wi-Fi distribution. We also have I audio root BDS. We have a Wi-Fi uh, distribution. I'm trying to think about what that would be for. Wireless signal repeater. Wi-Fi. I'm not familiar with why you would need to have a wireless signal repeater. Not for this system. I've never seen one of those in a pro setup. We'll see. Let me see if he explains it. We have two smart batteries in here. In the back. He shows four. Um, yeah, those are those are audio routes are great. Backup batteries. kit, we have two smart batteries, two Zaxcom QRX 200s, another yep. audio root BDS, a Zaxcom yep. RX4. We have yep. a Sound Devices Mix Pre 10 2. Okay, that's even more redundancy, which is fine. 10 Zaxcom ZMT3 Xs. Okay, those are where you're starting to starting to uh, to increase your value there. Zaxcom makes solid products. They have the ability to. Uh, transmit and record at the same time because they have the patent on that. They are also extremely small. They're lightweight. They're very, they're very much digital. They're digital. They've always been digital. N there's no hybrid mode in, in the whole thing like there are with some other manufacturers. No analog there. It's all digital. It also has never clip built into it. So there's multiple different stages of analog digital converters to make sure that you're not ever going to clip your audio. And you can remotely change the gain and remote trigger, you know, different things. So it's really cool. It's actually a very solid thing. As long as you have his XCOM recorder and the whole infrastructure, which he does, it's quite powerful. Six of them have the DPA 4061 microphone. Okay, that's a great lavalier microphone. One of my favorites. Yeah. It's low sensitivity. The, se the the 60 would be the normal sensitivity. Number four have the DPA 4071 microphone. Okay, that's the version that has this presence peak on it designed for you to put it underneath clothing. The 4060 and, uh, 4060 and 4061, those are designed to not go under clothing. They will start to muffle a little bit because all DPA microphones are flat unless you get something like this that, this, that has a presence boost to try to compensate for any of the, the clothing noise or not clothing noise, but the clothing uh, muffle. So there you go. We have four ZMT4s with the Audio Workbench mod. Ah, uh, great device. I love that transmitter. It is such a solid, lovely, lovely device. We have three more smart batteries for backup. We have three ships, yep. CMC 541s. Oh, 541s. So he has an older version of it. It's still a good, it's a great product. As a matter of fact, they're, um, they're, they were the like first real mainstream modular type microphone series. Sheps makes great stuff. And yeah, we're, I'm not the least bit surprised that we're sitting up here at about 58,000. Otherwise known as 641s, we have three Sheps. Otherwise known as 641s, the 641 was the one that replaced the 541. It's not otherwise known as it's basically a different model number. But what's the difference? Because it's basically a preamp. So I guess his point's you know, fine. At five views. We have the Ryko HC22 microphone. That's probably given to you for free. You're not going to match very well to that with a Sheps. It's part of your kit, but I don't think that that's going to be something that you're going to use at all over the Sheps C Mint 5 U. We have the Ryko HC15 microphone. Same kind of thing. I'd be willing to bet you he was sent an HC15 and an HC22 like someone else that you guys know and watch. Microphone. We have the Senken CS3E. We have a Sennheiser 416. We have two Sennheiser MKH50s. We have the. So there's a lot of redundancy in this system. And what he's doing also is he has different microphones for different setups. Uh, 50s are going to be great indoor microphones if you're using them uh, for sit down interviews, something like that in a non reverberant space. It's going to be great if you're needing a little bit more reach. There you go for the 416. You want a nice bright sound, go for the Cement 5U. He also, uh, you know, he's got various different microphones here. It's not just all redundancy. They're used for different purposes. Some of them might be kind of questioning if he would actually really use them or if he's just using it in this video to add to his price price tag. Neumann KMR82i. Long shotgun microphone. I love that microphone. It sounds great. We have the NTG3. I actually have two of these in my kit, but only one is out on the table. We have eight. Yeah. Why does he have the, the why doesn't he have the black version? 
You'd have the black version, homie. Sync time codes. We have two Zaxcom antennas. We have eight ERXs. We have 40 of these batteries. These go to the wireless systems. We have this custom thing made by my great father. Uh, looks like 3D printed, I guess. I don't know. That's obviously to hold batteries. Shout out to my dad. This holds and charges 18 batteries. Papa, by the way. That's right. We have an That's AF very clever. Six is backup, 32-bit. You can just do whatever. We have a smart slate. This is modern. It's even more redundancy. So you have Zoom and you have sound devices and you have Zaxcom. The Zaxcom will always work. And if it doesn't for some strange reason or you need to have additional channels, that's when you got the Mix Pre. I don't know why you need to have the F6 also by my dad he added this little thing looking out for you acs a nice little smooth grip for you look at that can you put a price on that you can't put a price on that 10 grand right there we have a rycote nano shield a rycote cyclone two rycote windshields and then the road blimp right here headphones we have betso i bet you that the road blimp was the one that came with the ntg uh three that he got that's probably the one he got with it. The Betsco, Betso bow tie. Oh, we have yeah. six boom poles. I have four different K-Tech boom poles and two ambient boom poles. We have 30 25 foot Mogami cables because you never know how long you'll need to run something. I have all sorts of tentacle cables. These run anywhere from $30 to $100 a piece. I got all these thigh straps, waist straps, chest straps, mic straps. Brendan. Is there something in every drawer on this thing? Wow. That's a full bag of Bubble Bee wind covers. I've got Comtex. Hold these. I've got Comtex. I've got Comtex. I've got more Comtex and clips than you can. So a lot of this stuff, he if he puts it in the drawers for real, it's not, I mean, I'm sure he knows exactly where it is, but it's not going to be ideal for a workflow if you're doing like television or motion picture, scripted television, because you need to have those things on a cart that you can just easily at a glance grab it and it's ready to go. It's already built, ready to go. It's already inside a, of a shock a shock mount. It's already inside of a of a Zeppelin. It's already with, you know, accessories next to it or something like that. All these look like they're in different drawers. As long as it works for you, buddy. Could ever dream of all these Comtech. I've got DPA 4071, DPA 4061. I've got uh, five B6s. I didn't he already say those 4061s and 4071s? Didn't he already say that? I have essential oils. I have Expo markers, wind covers, fur covers, wind softies. I think we're good. Okay, Brendan, great. Here's okay, so on the high end, what's $8,000? I mean, it's like, okay, you've, you've gone over $100,000, fine. So... This is a video where it's like $100,000 plus or minus 10%, $1,000 plus or minus 30%, 40%, 30%, whatever. Here's your stuff back. My, my first question, and I have several, is why you need all this stuff? You know, it's uncanny how often I hear. Is why you need all this stuff? If you're not adapting and constantly analyzing where you can improve and what you need to do your job better and more efficiently, you're going to fall behind. I'd argue, Brendan, maybe not. So that's a weird way to word it to me personally. I think he's right though on, on, I think that the spirit of what he's saying is correct. Normally you have two different types of people. There's the kind of people that will invest in something and then keep it forever. Then there's the kind of people, the sound mixers that will buy gear and then replace it when something newer and better comes out. It looks to me like Brandon is that kind of a guy. He has the Nova. He has a lot of the current, like the more recent type products and some of the tried and true ones that are going to last forever. So he's probably not going to have to replace those CMET 5Us down there. He doesn't have to replace his Zaxcom recorder if he doesn't want to. Those transmitters are going to be solid. All the, all the Zaxcom stuff is going to be great for him for years to come. The Mogami Gold cables aren't going to really have any issues either. They're going to last forever. The audio routes are going to be great. They have a, a they they have a great ability of being able to constantly manage the charge and maintain it. Plus, it gives you different uh, tools for you to, to to keep track of things, how many cycles and that kind of thing. For the most part, all of this is for when you're on set and every set's different and you need to adapt. The one thing I would point out, though, is that um, if you're going to do a package rental price on this, you're going to actually scale down the package. If it's like a basic package and you're charging, let's say, $500 for one slate and a recorder, a boom, and two lobs. 
let's just say that's your pricing. If that is your pricing, and then we're to say, okay, we got to throw in another law, that's a cha-ching. That's, a, that's an upsell, more, more money. If they were to say, okay, well, your standard package that we're going to rent the entire thing from you per day, whether we use it or not, that would be one of those things where you say, okay, this entire package, and still you, you have to select on whether or not you want to give them everything or not. I know mixers that will say you get 10 contexts, you get up to eight wires, you get you know two booms and that kind of stuff. If there's a big situation, a big scene where they're going to be bringing in more cameras because there's like 12 people actively on set talking, that might be when you need to break out something else completely. So uh, at that point, you might start to chinging because you're adding on additional transmitters and stuff like that. So even if they want your entire big package or the full package, you still got to hold back on some of those things and not include it all. You want your your small package or your standard package. Standard package will be more whether you use it every day or not, but you also have a different uh, depth, have different things a la carte that you can add on, like a voice of God. You don't use that every day, but you're not going to have that included as part of your standard kit, or maybe you do. I don't know what you're doing. I'm sure all these mics give different results. Really. Oh, yeah, and it's like most of the time I'm rolling with these, most of the time, but there are scenarios- He's a like chef's guy. Five actors and it's all- So that means he's probably Probably recording in places with no humidity, because if you're dealing with places with high humidity, then then the Shep's uh, microphones sometimes have humidity issues if you go indoors and outdoors. So it depends on the kind of stuff you're working on. If he's doing a lot of ENG type work and you throw a Shep's up there, it may have uh, issues going inside in the air conditioner and then going outside in humid heat. So it just kind of depends. If you've ever taken a cruise with like an like 20 years ago and taking your video camera as soon as you step outside the dew sensor trips on the camera and you can't use it for the ne next 30 minutes that's the same kind of thing that will happen with a Shep's microphone if you are if you're in a very heavily air conditioned place and you step outside into a very humid place that's extremely hot or at least it may happen sometimes that's been usually if if I don't manage things correctly that's the kind of thing that will get it if a sound utility comes inside the boom and then goes right outside to grab something off the off the cart to lav up somebody. I always yank that boom away from them because as soon as they step outside, it starts to pop and make all kinds of interesting sounds. Yeah, we're applying them to different situations, but like think about like when you want to shoot 24 frames per second or 60 frames per second, it's like, well, I'd rather shoot 60 so that in post, I have the option if I want it to slide on my footage. If you can get a solid boom mic, Yes and no. If you shoot at 60, you could be in, uh, in you know, it, it looks different if you shoot at 60 versus if you shoot it at 30. Personally, I uh, we've had sometimes some post issues when we've shot things that were not that we, if we did like action sequences and then started doing dialogue and then went back to action and dialogue and we did those back and forth, we would have to constantly change the frame rate because if you don't, it looks different. If you watch the movie Saving Private Ryan, every single time that their actors are talking on set and you know you're about to get into an action sequence, you can tell because the the footage, the 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 movie all of a sudden looks very different and then all of a sudden something action-wise happens. So you could always, if, you're, if you have an eagle eye and you know what you're looking for, things look different when they're shot at a higher shutter speed or a higher frame rate. So always shooting at it and then, you know, ramping it back down or at least having that. I don't know, man. I mean, there's a there's a bit of charm that happens in the world of filmmaking when there is something blurry as opposed to every single frame in per perfect, pristine sharpness. And a solid love setup. And, and again, looking at your needs, if you do weddings, I think get on his discount system. I'm trying to remember, did he ever show a shock mount? I don't know if he did unless there was one that was included with the NT3. Uh, Getting hmm. a Zoom F2 or the Tascam 10, those are going to get your job done. That's really all you need. That's what you need. Yeah, and I feel like this is where... For one person. Remember, if you're using a boom and a lav, you want to do that uh, and make sure that you have redundancy on people. Now, if you're talking about a discount system, you don't have that, so $1,000 is probably bare bones just to get you in the door. You might throw the lav on one person like a priest and then try to hide the the boom someplace else closer to the bride and groom to get them if you can. If not, position the boom where you can put it on the priest and then put the lavalier microphone on the groom. You can also play pr proximity. So if the priest is louder than the, the couple, you can put a lav on him. Anybody else who's going to be nearby is going to be quieter. But if you put it on the groom, 
you're going to pick up the priest just fine, especially because they are, have a big booming voice. Some of you guys might not have a, a kit built out as much as even just the beginner thousand dollar kit yet. But like Brennan's saying, he started with this kit, right? Yeah. This is all he had where he did a series, he did projects, and this got him through the day because his experience level and his clientele, that's all he needed. But yeah, I would much sooner, I would, I would, I would trust Brandon with a $1,000 kit over, uh, over some kid, you know, that just came out of, you know, some film school or something like that with the most expensive system he has here, simply because you may learn how to do the gear or something like that, but you don't know the, you don't have the experience to make it some sound really great. If you want clients to invest in you, yep. you have to invest in yourself. Okay. There's another aspect to it also. And it, it is that you, as you get your package rental, let's just say that you get Let's just say on that cheap, the, the cheaper package, let's just say that it took him three jobs at the beginning in order to pay for that kit one time. So let's just say it was $300 a day, roughly as a package. If you got $300 a day, you're going to reinvest that $300 into the kit to get yourself a better whatever. You know, maybe he does, he did it three times. He could get himself another microphone. He rented out something. And then all of a sudden, by the time you get up to maybe a $10,000 package, you can rent it out for $500 a day. And very easily, you know, with all the slates and stuff, the context, your, your value has increased. So at that point, you can start to turn that money back into more gear because at the end of the year, let's just say you've made $50,000 on gear. You could easily take that $50,000 and reinvest it back into your company to keep new gear there and to make sure that it's it's state of the art or you could pocket it all sock it away and pay you know 20 some odd thousand dollars in taxes and then keep the other 30 some odd thousand it's your choice and into your business and if you grow your business and you grow your kit um, <laughs> yeah. to what it is because there are points of this kit it's at 100k now but there are points where it was at 2k 5k 10k yeah. 20k those are good points wrong, but i'm sure the That's more it. it's grown the more you've been able to charge yeah totally yeah because i'm scaling my business and right. so you know you bring more to the table and you uh only up to a certain point though because yes you can do those bigger shows but for the most part you're not going to it's most of the time you're going to be doing a show at a standard level i've worked for mixers that have fifteen thousand dollar kits and or, or sound packages and they wouldn't make it work and then I've worked for mixers that have a $250,000 package and we make that work too. A lot of it is redundancy. A lot of it is having the ability to do some really cool things, whether you need to or not. You can provide more value. But you can't scale your business if you just stick with this for 10 no. years. The problem no, you is can't. I didn't have a mentor, right? I had no one to show me the ropes and say, hey, this is some good gear. This is some stuff you should look into. So yeah, the video is pretty much over. Enough of that. But I tell you, he made his point, and uh, even though he did exceed his budget, it kind of irritated me at first. But I mean, the lessons that they're basically talking about is, you know, starting off small, working on the smaller projects and working your way up. I mean, I'm working on bigger shows now, but I wasn't always. There was a time that I was working for $100 a day, if that, on a show, just to try to get that experience to work myself up. If you spend $1,000, you can't expect miracles, but if you spend $100,000, you can expect a lot of redundancy and different tools that will help you to accomplish the job in a variety of different ways. So there you go. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Sound Speech. Be sure to the future for more reaction videos, deep dives on sound topics, and as always, sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.